Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about our journey. And on our journey, he has given us the threefold path. But before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory, Lord. We thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space, Lord. We ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. Our journey. Do you know from the moment that we're born until the moment that we die, we are on a journey on this earthly plane. And sometimes it's helpful to visualize it like a path. You know, you ever notice a path in the woods where there's trees and just really notice that life is very different each year, <coughs> excuse me, each year that goes by. I have to get a sip of water, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> each year that goes by, sometimes each minute that goes by, we are on a journey <coughs> and we never know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. So I want you to think about that for a moment. If you were to look at your own life <coughs> as a journey, sometimes, <coughs> oh, <coughs> I was not planning a coughing fit. Sometimes um, there is a coughing fit. Sometimes there's a boulder that comes down. Sometimes a tree comes down. <clears throat> Sometimes there's a, a flood and we have to negotiate the flood. There's so much that happens on our journey in life. And what's so beautiful, <clears throat> no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, no matter what trials or tribulations we are experiencing on our own individual journey, we can trust that the Lord is with us at all times always. Our wonderful Lord, he's with us and he wants us to give him our troubles, all our concerns, <clears throat> anything that we're ready to let go of, any distress, we can just put it right at the foot of the cross. And when we breathe in, we can breathe in his Holy Spirit, his love, his light, his grace, his mercy, and his peace. So when we are on that journey of life, we can remember that he has given us the threefold path. And the threefold path is first the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is right here, right now with us. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. That's the first part of the threefold path. The second part of the threefold path is the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth his living word, when we can follow his instruction and place ourselves in the story and feel the Lord speaking to us, he can literally help us through all the challenges that we're going through. And the third part of the threefold path is the church people, the believers of our wonderful Lord. When we can get into a good group or connect with the believers, we can find that there are times that people are pouring into us, or we may find that we're pouring into other people uh, during their, their trials and their tribulations. So I encourage you to think about this. When you're on your journey, remember that you are never, ever, ever alone. And as you go through your week this week, I want you to think about your journey. See if you can even visualize a path <clears throat> in the woods. I must be having an allergic reaction to one of the <laughs> one of the trees in the woods. That's probably why I'm coughing. 
But also let yourself be aware that as you are in this stretch of your journey, it's not always going to be that way if you're going through a challenging season. The sun is going to come out. The rain or the flood is going to dry up. You will be able to negotiate getting around that boulder or, or that fallen tree. And remember that the Lord is with you through all of it. There are many examples in the Bible of uh, the people in the Bible being on a journey. Um, we can even focus on Moses in the Old Testament, how he led the people out of Egypt, out of slavery. And it took 40 years. It was supposed to be an 11 day journey to go from Egypt to the promised land, but it took 40 years of being in the wilderness. And that's just an example that we are all human beings. We all make mistakes. We all derail or go off um, our journey from time to time. Sometimes it's because of the people that we are experiencing life with. Sometimes it's because we're making mistakes, but we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all sin. And the Lord is here for all of us. He did not come just for the righteous, just for those people that are perfect. And really no one is perfect. He came for those that are the sinners that make mistakes so that he can help us on our journey. So I really want to encourage you to visualize and think about the Lord being on your journey with you as you go through life. <clears throat> I also like to think about in the New Testament how Jesus came to teach this whole new way of life, of living um, with God, with God in our hearts and in our presence. And he reminds us to uh, lean on him, to put all our struggles at the foot of the cross and breathe in his grace, his mercy, and his peace as we go through all of our experiences. I like to think about Judges. We'll go to scripture now. Judges um, 18, 5 through 6, and it says... Um, and this is when uh, the people were first starting out on their journey into the wilderness from uh, Egypt. And then they said, ask God, ask God. They were asking Moses to ask God whether our journey will, will be successful. And then um, the priest says, go in peace, replied the Lord. The Lord is watching over your journey. So absolutely, he's watching over our journey. He's watching over everything that we go through. He's with us through all of our experiences. In Jeremiah 17, 7, it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. So again, no matter what we're going through, if we can increase our faith, our hope, our trust in the Lord, he will indeed make our path straight and it will be so much easier to get through life when we depend and rely on our wonderful Lord. In Colossians 2, uh, 6 through 7, it says, <clears throat> Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. I love that reminder so much. Just remembering to really rely fully and completely on the Lord and allowing our roots to grow deep into him. He can absolutely help us to feel better. And he can help us to raise our number on that feel-good scale where 10 is the best and 0 is the worst. While we rely on him, no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what's happening on our journey, as we can feel his presence, as we can feel him partnering with us through all of our challenges, that can absolutely help us to raise our number and help us to feel better. I really hope that you join me in that. In Philippians 3.14, it says, 
I press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I love remembering that so much that no matter what I'm going through in life, if I can just stretch and push and grow and allow him to grow the fruit of my spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. When I can allow him to stretch me and put me in that refiner's fire and put me on that potter's wheel and help me to grow, I can focus on him, which is the true calling, is to have that relationship with him. In Deuteronomy 10, 11, it says, Go, the Lord said to me, and lead the people on their way so they may enter and possess the land I swore to give their ancestors. So he wants us to go. He wants us to continue to go further down on our journey. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how challenging it is, he wants us to continue to grow and to become the best version of who we are. When we can make those good choices while we're on our journey, it, we can literally, literally help our family line of ancestors. You know, we're all fallible. We all make mistakes. But when we can make better choices, that can help our family line and our uh, future offspring to be um, better versions of themselves as well. In Ezra 8.21, it says, There by the Ahava Canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children. So it's just such a wonderful reminder that sometimes we do need to give up what we may be leaning on. We may need to fast on food or fast on social media or fast on idols and whatever it is that we're leaning on. Let that go and rely fully and completely on our wonderful Lord. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So absolutely, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're going through, the Lord indeed has a plan for your life to prosper you, to not harm you, and to give you hope and a future. Isn't that beautiful and powerful? I really want to encourage you to soak those words in to your essence and to feel his presence. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn away from it. I love that reminder so much. It's never too late to have an impact on our children or our adult children, or even the child that lives within. It's never too late to uh, invite the Lord into our heart, to repent of our sins and ask him to be the savior of our heart. Will you join me in that this week? I sure hope that you do. In Psalm 23, 4, it says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I love remembering that and really feeling the presence of the Lord on my journey as I visualize walking in that path in the woods. He's with me at all times, always. He never, ever, ever leaves us. And remember to pray that he can make your life easier or pray for certain situations to happen and start to see and feel and know the power of those prayers. Really awesome, really powerful. In Psalm 91, 11, it says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. I love remembering that so much that even 
his beautiful angels that he has created are with us on our journey. And you can ask them to help you through all of your circumstances. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I love remembering that. Absolutely, when I can just remember, I just think about, you know, sometimes during the day in my challenging, uh, you know, school nurse office, I will just take a quick pause and just ask him, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me through these circumstances. And he does. He helps me to see things from a completely different perspective. So I encourage you to do that. Not only when you pray during your pray time, but also during the day. Start to develop that relationship with him where you can talk with him and ask him to help him on, help you on your journey. It will absolutely make you feel so much better. In Proverbs 3, 5, 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so remember that he's with you at all times, always. He absolutely is making our path straight. And all we need to do is to call him into our heart and to ask him to help us. And he's so ready, willing, and able to help us in all of our circumstances. And we'll end with Proverbs 16, 3, where it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish, establish your plan. So remember to focus on the Lord. He is your very best friend. He is always with you. Start to rely on him more and more and develop that relationship with him where you're talking to him and you're pausing and listening to how it is that he is guiding your footsteps. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I would love to hear from you. If you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper, I'm a nurse, a life coach, a clinical pastoral counselor, uh, and a therapist. I would love to work with you. My email address is clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.